Security forces have opened fire on anti <laughs> Politics matters to people's everyday lives. It defines who we are, um, what we do, how we react to other cultures. Politics is really an argument about the best way to run society. It matters to the economy, it matters to public policies and public services, and it matters in issues of war and peace. There's a kind of social contract of some kind in a society with your government and your people. So how do you feel about the state? What expectations do you have? Do you as a citizen feel that you have power? When you think about relations of justice with people beyond your own society, to what extent are we obliged to see their problems as our problems as a matter of justice which we have to do something about? We need to understand politics in ways which are expansive rather than narrow. It seems to me inconceivable that you wouldn't think about where women fit into that. I work mainly on immigration and asylum issues. I look at UK immigration policy and I look at EU level immigration and asylum policy. And it's obviously a very hot political topic within Europe. Um, and it poses very particular challenges for European countries and the EU. One of the problems we have in the 21st century is fighting these complex wars against often non-state actors. It's very different from the traditional state-on-state -state conflicts of the past. It's not so much a matter of, of winning militarily on the ground, but of managing public support at home and, and abroad. After 9-11, British politicians assumed that the threat was foreign. And if you look at the laws that were passed, they were directed at what they called foreign terrorist suspects or asylum seekers. After the 7-7 bombings, it became very clear that they got it completely wrong. The threat was homegrown. We have seen that governments throughout the world, they've used the threat of terrorism to increase their power within their societies. The 21st century has all sorts of different security concerns. What are those? How do we deal with them? What's different from the past? So international security is really at the heart of, of international relations. What is globalization? It's an increasing level of interconnectedness between different societies. One example is trade, but also free movement of people free movement of ideas. Some of the most powerful effects have been through communications technologies, providing ways for people to organise politically against entrenched power relationships. I think that has quite a profound effect on political possibilities for the future. Globalisation can often be presented in westernised terms as we face competitive challenges from other economies elsewhere in the world. Students of politics need to be aware of differing perspectives uh, and they need to be aware of the consequences of thinking in Western terms on non-Western peoples. Globalisation has very double-edged effects. So on the one hand, you have women entering the labour force, often in, in really difficult conditions. But on the other hand, even under those non-ideal conditions, women are sometimes finding empowerment through changing gender relations. How we deal with globalisation and the challenges it produces really will change from place to place, from political system to political system, from the UK also to the devolved level in Scotland. So I'm really interested in studying devolution both in the UK and elsewhere in how power is divided between different levels of government. We look at elections, we look at what voters think about political parties. It's all going on around us. You see the parliament building behind me here, which is at the heart of devolution in the UK, at the heart of multi-level governance in the European Union. And in this setting of ambiguity, of conflict about what Scotland should be, that's just tremendously exciting. If you're a political scientist, uh, obviously you want to be in a capital city. There's a parliament and a civil service right on your doorstep. For one city to combine all that and to have one of the best universities in the world, I think is quite exceptional. Coming to Edinburgh has been fantastic. They've allowed me to explore my own interesting um, but slightly controversial and unusual area of research. It's actually a really vibrant community of scholars with lots of different approaches and we might disagree but it will be an honest debate and it will be a debate that, that respects different viewpoints. We have such a lot of expertise within the School of Social and Political Science and in the law school across the university where people are engaged in studying the distribution of power and we do that while it all takes place in our doorstep. But we also have um interesting approaches at the theoretical and philosophical levels to provide us with a general 
understanding of international relations. We have uh, an outstanding cosmopolitan set of students uh, and it produces a tremendous mix which I think is socially interesting but it's intellectually challenging too to have the perspectives on our shared problems from different places.